Uh, this training course is uh, two groups, I would say they are the industry and also people working for the government. Uh, and the main objective of the course is to highlight the potential in improving the use of fish byproducts. In many processing, uh, when fish is processed, maybe 50% of the fish ends up as a byproduct, 50% ends up uh, as a main product. And focus on this 50% or even more that is not utilized optimally has been very little. And we would like to highlight the potential from an economical point of view, but also from an environmental point of view and also from a nutritional food security point of view. So by improving the use of this, we could, without harvesting more of the limited fish resources we already have, we could get much more back. Well, first of all, I would maybe like to focus more on the opportunities. There are challenges and there are uh, related to byproducts. The volumes of the, maybe the technology, it's a cost involved in processing it. But I think the opportunities are there also. There is a huge value from an economic point of view if you know how to appreciate this value. And I think we have to look at how can we use this part. Now we see that there is an increase of interest in improving the use of byproducts, mainly because of the very high price of fish oil and fish meat. So actually it has become interesting for the industry to process it into fish meat and fish oil because it's, uh, it's an uh, income generating activity. Previously maybe there was not that interest, but from 2000 or up to now the price of fish meat has almost double five times. For fish oil it's almost ten times higher than it was like uh, 13, 14 years ago. And that shows that there is a high demand for, for fish meat and fish oil. We cannot harvest more fish from our seas to process fish meat and fish oil. So byproducts from processing of fish for human consumption has become a, a, of great value in this context. But then in addition some of these uh, byproducts could also be used for uh, human consumption. It could be used to extract other high value components. But uh, primarily, I think the big volumes need to be uh, converted maybe into feed or uh, products for animal consumption. And then you can also look at more high value products that could be used for human consumption and also could be contribute to improve food security and reduce malnutrition at global level. As a raw material, the byproducts is a raw material of a relatively low value, but it could be used if handled in a proper way. It could also be used for, for human consumption in some cases. I think when it comes to fish and fish oil, there is a market there, but when it comes to developing new products, one, there is a lot, there are a lot of new products that are developed based on, on fish byproducts. Very interesting, which uh, could be uh, used for many different, uh, how can I say, uh, different uh, problems could be solved. But the main, main challenge, I think, is if you don't have a market, you develop a new product. It could be a very good product, but if the market is not willing to pay the cost you invest in order to process it, and if nobody is willing to, do, to buy it, then it's that difficult to, to, promote, uh, to promote such uh, utilization of byproducts. But I think uh, for the big volumes we have uh, fish meal and fish oil, which has a huge amount, not only for feed purposes, but for example, omega-3, long-chain omega-3 oils that we know are of high demand, more and more also demanded for human consumption as a nutraceutical. And there are great opportunities there because there is a market that is asking for it. But for other products it might be more difficult. For example, we have gelatin that are developed from, uh, for example, skins and bones from fish. Uh, and it could be a good alternative to gelatin from mammalian sources and 
for uh, people of different religion beliefs, maybe fish gelatin could be a good option compared to gelatin based on, on uh, porcelain or pork. But the challenge is that one, to be able to obtain the quality you need, the price of, of production is maybe four to five times higher than compared to mammalian and gelatin. So you have to really look for niche markets and try to sell it there. So I think the main challenge is actually to convince the market so they are willing to, to buy it. There are many products that are developed in the labs, but to take a step out and be able to, to access the market, I think that's the main challenge. When we're talking about bycatches, which are not byproducts, byproducts are of course the residues after processing bycatches that you uh, catch fish species that you are not targeting. And of course, we should not now, I think in the EU and many countries, you're not allowed to throw any fish uh, back to the sea anymore. So you have to try to utilize it. One challenge there is, of course, and I think that's the biggest challenge, is that these species by, that uh, consist of the bycatch, some of them might be species that are protected and are not supposed to be fish. So by promoting a utilization of something that you, from uh, the beginning, you should not even catch, that could be a challenge. You should not throw it away, but at the same time you can promote it because then it could be a, a targeted fisheries at the end. And that happens sometimes that the bycatch has actually maybe a higher value than the main catch. And if there is an incentive to, to get a good value for this, that could be a challenge. When the, ideally, we should try to reduce the volumes of bycatch to the absolute minimum. But then, of course, if you, you take it on board, you have to find a way of doing it. But, it's a challenge to, if the, the, the ones uh, fishing actually can have an income on something they shouldn't even catch, that I think is the main challenge.